Humans are an energy-hungry species, and our current sources of power are not cutting it. Nuclear fusion, the process that fuels the sun, might offer the kind of clean, abundant energy we need if only scientists can figure it out. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor is the biggest and most ambitious attempt yet to harness the energy produced by forcing two atoms to become one. The $25 billion experiment in St. Paul Les Durance, France, is a joint project of the European Union, China, India, Japan, South Korea, Russia, and the U.S. Its ultimate goal is to do what no fusion experiment has done before, produce more heat than it consumes. The project has been stymied by delays and ballooning costs, and a critical independent assessment forced out the top leadership several years ago. In some skeptics' eyes, it will always be a boondoggle, a waste of too much time and money for an experiment that is aiming to be not even a working power plan, but merely a proof of concept. But Eider finally reached a long-sought milestone in July 2020 with the official start of machine assembly when scientists began joining the various components provided by the partner countries. We have the same feeling as somebody who is supposed to run successive marathons, and you achieve the first one, but still you know there are many more to do," says Bernard Bigot, who took over as Eider Director General in 2015. It gives us more confidence in the future, but we know that nothing is taken for granted. The challenge is to essentially build a miniature star inside a laboratory and then control it. The heart of the experiment is a 23,000-ton cylinder where intense, superconducting magnets will try to keep a 150 million degrees Celsius plasma contained long enough for fusion to occur. Making the physics work out will be a huge challenge, but so will conquering the construction. It is a large-scale international project where parts are made all across the world, and it has to fit together like a puzzle, and it has to work says plasma physicist Saskia Mordek of William and Mary, who is not part of the EITER team. Scientists hope to press the proverbial red button and turn on the reactor in 2025, with the ultimate goal of running it full power by 2035. If it succeeds, the payoff would be gigantic. Fusion has the potential to release much more energy than burning coal or oil or even nuclear fission, which fuels traditional nuclear power plants. Fusion produces no greenhouse gases or radioactive waste. Fusion, from my point of view, is really the one option that complements reusable energy and could be the solution for climate change, Bigot says. The next three or four years will be absolutely critical. Temperature gradient, either will include one of the hottest places in the universe, the vacuum vessel housing the 150 million degrees Celsius plasma, as well as one of the coldest places in the universe. The magnets that will confine and control that plasma must be kept at about 4 kelvins. Separating the two will be a beryllium-coated steel blanket to shield the sections from each other, which will attach to the vacuum vessel's interior wall via stub keys, currently covered by yellow caps to keep off dust. World's largest, the Tokamak Chamber, seen from the top, top and middle, bottom, is a cylinder that will hold the EITER experiment. The word Tokamak is a Russian acronym for a torable chamber with magnetic coils, a concept first developed in 1957 by physicist Igor Golovin. EITER's Tokamak will be the biggest ever built, twice the size of the largest currently operating. The base of the machine was lowered into the chamber in July 2020 marking the beginning of the project's assembly at the site in the south of France. The site is funded by Europe, which is paying for nearly half of the total cost of the project. Europe's contribution is managed by Fusion for Energy. Empty vessel, Eider's vacuum vessel will be made of six segments, each built in South Korea or Italy. The huge steel sections had to be shipped by boat to the port of Foss or Mer near Marcel, where they were transported by road 100 kilometers northeast to the Eider site. Now that the first pieces have arrived, workers will connect them with magnets and thermal shields and then lower them into the tokamak chamber. Deep freeze, the superconducting magnets in the reactor can work only at supercold temperatures near absolute zero, which will be maintained by liquid helium circulating through cryogenic pumps. Operators control the system via a complex set of hand valves tapped based on local readings of pressure, temperature, and flow. The finished cryogenic plant built by contractor Air Liquide. Bottom will be the world's largest helium refrigeration unit. Magnetic cage, Eider's fusion plasma will be encased and contained by a nest of magnets, including six ring-shaped superconducting polyol magnets, shown here that will pile on top of one another horizontally to surround the plasma. In addition, 18 toroidal field coils will encircle the machine vertically, and one large central solenoid will sit in the middle, forming the largest superconducting magnet system ever built. 
Superconductors allow electric current to flow without resistance, enabling electrons to move freely to create intense magnetic fields. Magnet construction, made of niobium tannin and niobium titanium, the polyatom magnets are the only ITER components manufactured on site. With diameters between 17 and 24 meters and weighing up to 400 metric tons each, they are too large to be built elsewhere and transported. Polyatom field coil 6 is shown here inside its cooling cryostat. So that's it for today. If you like this video then please hit the like and subscribe button for more videos thanks for watching.